We are on the eve of Yom Kippur, and tonight we are going to do our Yiskor. Yiskor, a time of reflection. Yiskor, a time of memory. Yiskor, our personal reflections. Yiskor, our communal reflections. Yiskor, our reflections as a people. Our reflections as people, as a community, and as individuals here in Caulfield Shul, all coalesce, all come together when we say, as we will in a moment's time, as Dovah will recite for us, the Kel Male Rachamim for those who died during the Shoah. I'm 
begun we begun Nothing worthwhile is won without sacrifice, without blood and sweat and tears. And so the greatest miracle for us as Jews of our times, the birth of Medinat Yisrael, once again being in our own land, our own land for our own people, came at a cost, the cost of the lives of so many young men and women. And so now we say the Kel Male Rachamim, for the soldiers who died in the many wars that Israel has fought. במעלות קדושים, טהורים וגיבורים, כזוהר הרקיע מזהירים. לנשמות חיילי צבא ההגנה לישראל, שנפלו במלחמות ישראל, וכל הלוחמים במערכותם, שחרפו נפשם למות על קידושת השם, ובעזרת אלוהי מערכות ישראל, הביאו לתקימת האומה והמדינה ולגאולת הארץ ועיר האלוהים. בעל הרחמים ויעש תראה בסתר כנפיו לעולמים ויצרור, ביצרור החיים, את נשמתם, אדוני, הוא נחלתם. בגן עדן, ב- 
بگان ایدن تهی من خطا و یان خوب شلوم ام نیش کوام و یام دول گرالا لکیت هایمین و نمار و نمار So we are on page 17 now in the booklets. We're going to be saying our own personal Haskarot, our own personal Yiskor Tfilot now. In the booklets, it only has insertions there for a mother and father, for parents. But of course, this is a Yiskor for all of our dear ones who have passed away. And you may also want to grab a Sidur or a Machsor if you have one nearby. Um, in the Art Scroll Sidur, it's on page 810. Um, the various Haskarot. Yiskar Elohim Nishmat Shibagan Eden Venomar Amen Yiskar Elohim Iskar Elohim Nishmar Shiva Ganeid and Menomar Amen Him shot, Sadiki, Magani Hot, Shabagan Aiden, and Omar Amen. Shibaganid in Venomar Amen, Yiskar Elohim. Yiskar Elohim Nishmur. Shiva Ganeid and Menomar Amen. Vim Shad Sadiki, Magani Hot, Shiva Ganeid and Menomar Amen. One of the best musicals that I haven't seen this year is Hamilton, but I have heard some of the evocative lyrics. And in the last song, three questions are asked. One, who remembers your name? Two, who keeps your flame? Three, who tells your story? I couldn't think of more pertinent questions that encapsulate the purpose of Yiskor. Yiskor also means remembrance. Yiskor is about the stories, the stories of those with, that we have lost. Yiskor is about our responsibility to keep the flame alive. At the heart of Yiskor is a four-letter word. It's called loss. 
If there's one thing that has characterized our past 18 months of this pandemic, it's surely the many shades of loss. The loss of life, of health, of freedom, of mobility. The lost celebrations and anniversaries, and the simple pleasures of being with friends and family, community, and congregation. The grief of these compounded losses has only been exacerbated by the absence of the things that we usually draw on to help us through. I'm thinking particularly of all the strange and sometimes surreal funerals of this last year and a half. COVID has robbed us of the comfort of closeness, the consolation of saying goodbye to our departed while surrounded by family and friends and community. That's why we call a funeral a levaya, an accompaniment. We, the living, accompanying our deceased on their long last journey. We, the living, accompanying our grieving friends on the long road from the shtibble to the end of Shiva and beyond. Grief is universal. It comes to us all. And with each loss, we remember the many others that have carved themselves so deeply into our hearts. Shakespeare put it so beautifully and poignantly when he said, grief comes not as a soldier, but as a battalion. In other words, with each loss, we are mourning for all our losses. And so the losses of this pandemic may have become a river of despair and of grief to so many. You know, we have a tendency in, in our West and in the West, in our addiction, in our happiness-addicted culture, to neglect and to invalidate the emotional experience of people suffering loss. We too often pathologize the natural ebb and flow of grief. There's still too much death denying in our culture, and too often there's a conspiracy of silence around it. It's been called the last taboo. Loss is painful. It hurts, it saps our strength, it messes with our minds, it challenges our faith. And that's actually the way that it is and should be. It's only that when we deny a grief and don't let it run its natural path, its natural painful path and course, that it becomes a problem and possibly a pathology. Judaism has long recognized this. And all the laws and the mitzvot and the rules and the rituals that we have around our velut and mourning are there to help us acknowledge the absence the abrasions of reality, the crevices of suffering that loss etches into our souls. Just think about how confronting our funerals are. There's no pretty firing up the graveside, no flowers to gentle the gaping hole, just the hard and sometimes brutal, brutal sound of the earth hitting the coffin. One of the marvelous tools of our tradition is to help us with grieving. In this Yiskor time, we are the quintessential Yiskor people. We carry memory in our bones. Remembrance is in our blood. We remember when the world forgets. Yiskor tells us it's good to grieve. It's critical to remember. And so each Yiskor time, I remember my father Isaac. I remember my in-laws Zelek and Eva my grandparents, especially my beloved Zayda Bani, my family members, particularly those who were killed in the Shoah. I feel the absence of friends. I see the absence of so many of your family and friends whom I got to know in my years here at Caulfield Shul. I look around at all these empty seats here, but I can remember each and every one of their vacant places. Like you, I carry the burden of grief. And sometimes as I struggle with the weight around my midriff, I think I'm carrying my father's weight, his burdens of Shoah loss, displacement, and identity. These were always solidly expressed in his expanding stomach. But then, you know, I'm reminded of his goodness, 
and his gentleness, the qualities, the strengths, and the opportunities that he gifted to me and to my siblings. Grief ther therapist Chris Hall reminds us that death ends a life, but not a relationship. We find ways of carrying our deceased with us in our lives as they carried us in their lives. Rabbi Steve Leader reminds us that we can find ways not to be crushed by the sadness, for they would not have wished such a weight on us. And even as we work through, walk through the gates al Mavet, through the dark shadow of the valley of death, we know that there is lightness and warmth still in the world. We walk with light and with hope. I will not be afraid, for you, God, you are with us. As the people of memory, we draw on our remembrance of our past. We remember the Egyptian story and its message to say every day, I will not remain in Mitzrayim. I will not live like a slave, numbed and dumbed by the relentless suffering all around, the unbearable anguish that we have recently experienced in Afghanistan and Yemen, the Uyghurs and the Rohingya. We remember Persia and Spain, the Soviet Gulag and Auschwitz, the War of Independence and the Yom Kippur War. We look backwards, not to be enslaved by memory, but to move forwards into the future. The Hebrew word yiskor is in the future tense. We remember for the future, for we are a people of hope and the people of anticipation. We refuse to accept that humanity is essentially evil. We believe in the ultimate triumph of our essential goodness. That's what it means to belong to a messianic people. That's what it means to belong to the Jewish people. We will remember the names. We will keep the flames. We will keep on telling the story.